Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a uh, little guide on unit positioning and uh, how much unit positioning matters for um, creep rounds, how much it matters for uh, PvP rounds, and how much it matters for your specific unit synergy to have a unit placed in a specific spot with your particular composition. So, if you notice in the first uh, curve song, uh, I did grab a two cost unit. Extremely important that you grab a two cost unit. Um, that way you can make sure you can get four one cost units um, with your first selection. Oh wow, we got a wrap. Damn, two B curve bells already, that's really good. But anyways, uh, as far as these first three creep rounds, you don't need a reposition for them. Um, but the Krugs round that comes up in about six stages from now, I'll go over that then. Let's see what we can grab. Let's grab those. I think those are the strongest units out of the selection. Let's put these two units in the middle that way, you know, they're as close to the creeps as possible. But yeah, in, in terms of unit positioning, um, there's a couple ways I look at it. There's ranged versus melee, you know, obviously having your melee up front and your range behind. There's positioning your crowd control. Usually you want your crowd control units to take damage first. So wherever you think the opponent is, you want to make sure that you place uh, your unit right in front where they can take the most damage possible. Say you think your opponent is usually sitting up on the right side, put your CC unit on the right side. If they're on the left side, put them on the left side, for example. Hmm. Well, sell the Garen, grab double Warwick. I think that's strongest for now. I mean, it doesn't matter for the creep round because any set of three units, all tier one, if they could be three level one Fioras, and it would still beat the creeps. These first three creep rounds are basically just a gimme. Let's hope we can get a. Let's hope we can get a Rage Blade or something. Okay, we got Fan Dancer, so that can be placed on our front line, and we have a Shiv. Or we have Rapid Fire. Or Frozen Heart. Honestly, any of those work. Another Warwick, perfect. Another Cassidy. Let's see. Mm, let's grab a Pike. I guess we do have an assassin already. And, you know, we got void, two voids. Honestly, this is probably a pretty good setup. I don't think I want to put a Phantom Dancer on a Warwick. I think what I'm going to do... I might not even put anything on, actually. We can wait until the carousel decide what um, I'm just going to put on people. Cause honestly, like a rapid fire isn't really helping Kha'Zix or, you know, as much. It might help Nidalee a little bit. We, we only have a tier one Nidalee. And we don't know if we want to commit into building that into a rapid fire. Cause maybe we want a rage blade. Maybe we want a phantom dancer um, on a better frontline unit than Warwick, for example. So we have a couple options. I think we will grab the thing. Just cause. You usually want to spend down to, uh, you want to spend all of your gold early. That way you can give yourself as many potential pairs and setups as possible. Wow, okay. So, vein for the Warwick. So, we have three assassins. I mean, we could go assassins, and a rapid fire cannon on assassins is busted. Just because you can't miss, so they can't counter you with Fan Dancer. But... Do we really want <laughs> rapid fire on it? Cossex? Probably not. Although brawlers are pretty good with the assassins. This tier of the goddess could go with a pike for a spear of shojin. So if we, maybe we yeah, maybe we maybe we commit to assassin tier. And I'll tell you how to position assassins for your particular comp. Cause it's actually pretty specific. Why why is my Warwick why are both Warwicks just AFK? <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Okay. I think I still win this. Oh wait, maybe I don't. Oh, just barely. Grab Darius as well. Tier 2 Cassidin. Uh, do we want... Mm, might as well leave that for now. Do we want the Wild? I think we want a second Brawler in Void. I think that's stronger. Rather than the Wild bonus on Warwick. Alright, so we gotta think... Obviously, I think we're going to go for a Spear Shojin for the Pike, because that's going to be really strong. Spear Shojin plus any other tier item will make him get his ulti off instantly. Then Spear Shojin will make it so that he can reset his stuns. That's actually a really strong combination. A red buff on Graves is really strong. Honestly, it's a little bit greedy. Do I even want this? No, I'll grab the bears. Oh, BF Sword Rengar. Hmm, there's only one. There's two BF Swords. But we're last to pick, so we don't get a choice. There's honestly a lot we can do. We can get a Rage Blade. We can grab BF Sword. We can grab another tier for like a Seraphs. Honestly, either BF Sword or Tear or like on a, we could pick any of that, and I'll be solid. I think we want the BF Sword Rengar for the Spirit Show Gym over anything else, because Rengar is a three cost unit too, and it's okay to sell the Rengar even though he's an assassin, just because we want the Spirit Show Gym on Pike. So how do we want to set this up? I think we can spend just to maintain win streak. And we'll put the pike out here. And we have five spots, right? Put a spear shojin on pike. Mm, do we want to come into a rapid fire on Zed? I think we win just by leveling up to level 5 there. So what I did, instead of um, sitting on my gold and getting economy, so getting the plus 1 gold from having 10+, plus, we instead made, uh, chose to try to maintain win streak by leveling up there. Uh, it was on curve, so it was a perfect amount of experience uh, to get to the next level. Do we want to keep Nidalee's? And might as well grab her. Tier 2 Nidalee's pretty strong by herself. Oh, tier 2 pike. So we got the Shojin pike. This is really solid. Grab another Cassidy. And uh, also we want the Rengar. We'll hold on to this for now. I think it's the strongest. Pike provides a lot of CC for assassin comps. Actually, I'm going to reposition my units next round to um, to show you guys something. So you notice how the Lucian didn't have to move um, to auto attack? I'm going to show you guys something specific with Assassins that will force the enemy backline to move. And it's actually, it's very simple and it'll make sense um, when I explain it to you. But this is, uh, what I'm going to show you is how to position your assassins. Actually, no, I'll do it after this round. Because this round is Crux. So, well, I'll explain positioning as assassins versus Crux. So, assassins, if you read it, assassins leap to the farthest enemy at the start of combat. Okay? What does that mean for us? Well, we want our assassins to focus on a single target, right? We want all of our units to focus a single target. 
Um, because with the Krugs, what happens, they have a special effect where if one of the Krugs dies, the other Krugs that are still alive go back to full HP. So it doesn't make sense to spread your damage over multiple targets, but instead to uh, focus a single target down and try to kill it as quickly as possible. That way the healing doesn't do as much versus you. Now obviously I have so many tier 2 units that it doesn't matter. I could position however and would have won the round, but anyways you get the point. I don't even think I'll use Lissandra or Varys, no matter what, so I'm not even going to pick him up. Usually it's a good habit to spend your all of your gold or put your gold down to um, the next um, 10, if that makes sense. Let's see, we sell something. Hmm. We could level up here. I think we level up. So the reason why I'm going to level up, and we're going to do this. So I'm going to put my brawlers, or like my, my melees, I'm going to put them on the back line, and watch this. Their back line is going to have to walk up to auto attack. Or they would have, but this Jasana walked to the side instead of walking forward. But anyways, if a comp is positioned all the way in a corner and they're corner stratting this will force them to walk forward and put themselves in a position where um they can get screwed over i think i'm gonna put my rapid fire instead i think we commit to the zed i was hoping that maybe we can get a um maybe we can get like a Rengar with a rapid fire and like items, but we just aren't getting other items. Let's get Zed rapid fire. A fed Zed is pretty good, especially with that ninja bonus he gets. He gets plus 40% attack damage. That's pretty solid. So the next, uh, should we just put Void in? Maybe we sell Nidalee, put Void. Nidalee gets us to 10 gold too, so that's actually perfect. So we got assassin number four on the bench. Let me position my uh, bench a little bit better. We don't need this nidalee either. I'm thinking void is gonna be better than wild. Just because we get the extra armor pen so my assassins do a lot more damage. Void actually, um. Funny enough, Void actually doesn't do as much early game. Void is actually not very strong early game whatsoever. It's really strong late game when a bunch of your opponents have armor on their front line. Or they have stuff like, maybe they have Noble Bonus uh, and stuff like that. Or they just have Chain Best or Thorn Mails or whatever. Let's see what on their front line. And that's when the void bonus becomes good. Basically, it's like a counter to nobles. Because if you look at... Uh, actually, you can't look at armor in this game, not yet at least. But if you know the armor values of units, I will say most armor... The armor value of units is like 20 or 25. Whereas something like a noble buff gives 100 armor, or a chain vest gives 20 armor, which basically like doubles their armor. So again, this should... Oh, wait, this Vayne has Rapid Fire. So she doesn't get moved out of the corner. But if she didn't have Rapid Fire, she couldn't attack across the whole board. She would be moved up. What do we sell? Warwick? Yeah, I don't think it's important for Warwick to get Tier 3. That's not, not the, uh, you know, best thing. We'd rather have the extra gold than... Uh, the one Warwick. So, um, let me talk about how to position against assassins. Because obviously I'm playing as assassins and I'm kind of talking about how I want to position to make my assassins as effective as possible. But, we can also talk about how... Uh, 
how we can position against assassins. So if assassins are stacked on one side, or maybe like, say you want to position against my Zed, what you want to do, you want to put all of your units in one corner on the opposite, on the uh, same side as the Zed. And then you put your tank unit. Oh, wow. Rengar's spatula was still up. Are you serious? I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> Maybe I'll give you a force of nature, Rengar. So, say my Zed's right here, right? Yeah, we'll put them in this corner just for the example. Say my Zed's right here. If they place all of their units right here, and they replace like a big tank over here, or maybe someone with a Phantom Dancer in this corner. You know, someone who's like tanky against, um, you know, against the Zed. Then my Zed won't jump onto their squishy backline, and instead will jump on this target over here, which usually you wanna put a tank or some kind of CC, maybe like a Warwick, or maybe the, for this guy, he'd put his Fiora in the corner. The way my Zed's attacking a useless ass Fiora instead of like, um, one of their carries, like the Draven. And that's how you position against assassins. Or could position. Obviously, you can't do that early. You can only do that later in the game when you know for sure you're going to be against either, like, um, the assassin player or, like, someone else. And it could be beneficial. Hmm. Yeah, Tier 2 Katarina. I, th I mean, we have six assassins right now, right? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we got six assassins. But I'm not going to choose to put the six assassins yet. Just because I want the... I want brawlers to be on my board or someone that doesn't start invisible. That way we can draw out their back line. This guy is actually positioned decently well. Although he has his um, Shibana in front line, which I don't necessarily agree with. He, they, the Sh well, I guess Shibana was fine, now that I think about it. Just because my assassins jumped, but what if I had a, my Kassadin right there, hitting the Shibana? That could have been pretty bad. Or maybe someone else's Kassadin. Hmm, might as well grab the work, I guess. I think I win this round no matter what. But usually how you want to position against wolves is you want to put your your front line, like your melee units, in front of your range units. Now obviously with this comp I have no range units. I mean I guess I could, you know, switch corners. Because these wolves would jump here. My my Zed can attack from range since he has that rapid fire. Actually, screw the war, it's about pike. Um, and yeah, you want to put your tanks directly in front. So we do have a fan mancer. Should we put that on Pike? Oh, we have a Rage Blade, actually. I think we put the Rage Blade on, um, on Zed. Rage Blade Zed's pretty decent. Just because, uh, especially with Rapid Fire, he's already getting so many auto attacks off. And he's a ninja. I like it. Who else would we put Ra uh, Rage Blade on? Like, Rengar? Eh. It's fine, Zed. Now I do I do wanna say that um of the of the ninja assassins, Zed is the weaker version. Akali is infinitely better just because her cast down on her ultimate is instant. So if we do get a Akali, maybe we can swap out the Zed for an Akali. And maybe put items on Rengar. And that could be a viable option. Looks like we're having no issues here with our assassins so far. Let's take a look at other boards. So I do want to uh, go over a hockey. So in Teamfight Tactics, you can scout other players with hockeys. So if you wanted, you can see there's nothing here. If you wanted, you can go to other players' boards. You could press Q. 
And you can look at without, you know, clicking on the actual player, right? I, I kind of like clicking on players, though. That's just my personal preference. Let's see. Let's put the Tier 2 Katarina in. So we have our three brawlers in at the very back, right in the middle. So no matter which side they're on, they're going to be forced to walk forward. And then we got Assassin's back line too. Although we could put them on the second line if we get more brawlers. With Assassins, what I'm really looking for is like brawlers like Cho'Gath or something like that. You don't want to blitz with brawlers. Yeah, Blitz, Blitz is a bad brawler for Assassins. Because essentially Assassins will jump in and then you'll hook the the carry away from your Assassins. But yeah, Cho'Gas, Warwick's, uh, Ruxai's are all good. Uh, but since we are going like a full six Assassin, I think we just look to level up. Grab another pike. A lot of positioning, I mean, you don't really have to worry about positioning of your assassins until later in the game. Like, until it gets down to the last two or three opponents. I think we beat pretty much everybody. Just because we've maintained this win streak the entire game. I think we're just so much gold ahead of everybody, I anticipate that we're going to have a perfect game. So... If we can get another spatula, we can grab another spatula, or we can grab um, maybe a BF sword for the Zed, and maybe get Bloodthirster on Zed. That could be a good option. There are two spatulas. There are no BF swords, but there is a five cost unit here, the Oswald that you can grab. Um, Recurve Draven is also another good option. I think I just got... Oh, wow. They're leaving the spatula up for me. That's perfect. So, we'll just grab the spatula. Looks like he went up for the, going for the Oslo. Uh, both spatulas ended up being up. I don't think these guys know what's going on. <laughs> I'll be honest. Okay. All right, now we gotta think since we have um, we got a force of nature out here. Hmm. I think we just go and just win the game. So let's do this. Uh, wait, why is my Zed out here? Okay, we're good. Six assassins, right? Yeah, we got six assassins at level eight with um, void, uh, wild, and brawlers. This is really nice. So now, pretty much for the rest of the game, we're going to be looking to uh, reroll and just upgrade our assassins. Since we already have our full composition. Let's take a look at other boards. Let's see who could potentially beat us. I don't think anyone can beat us. Um, but in case someone has a chance to beat us, we want to take a look at who has a potential chance to beat us and look to counteract them. Um, no, I don't, no stuff there. So the mm, Rowan Soul. Honestly, these guys just don't have items. Oh, Phantom Dancer Draven. Okay. Phantom Dancer Draven is on the right side, so we're gonna put our Zed on the left side. That way we guarantee that the um uh, our rapid fire Zed, which rapid fire counters Phantom Dancer because the attacks can't be dodged. Um that way if we do go up against that uh, Draven guy, that we uh, make sure we win. So we have, we just went up against Zerf P or Zerf Pi, and he lived with one HP. Um, there's no um for this next round. For the Raptors, if you focus single target on the Raptors, 
depending on your composition, it could be bad. So you basically want your unit spread. Um, so with the raptors, what happens when you kill one raptor, all the other raptors become enraged and deal extra damage and have higher attack speed. So killing them all roughly at the same time is ideally the best. So you want your unit spread out. Because I'm an assassin, I'm already spread out. I don't need to do anything, so we're fine. Let's see what items we got off raptors. If we don't get anything good, if we don't get anything at all, then we can put a sword breaker on somebody. Maybe sword breaker on like Rengar or something. A BF sword? So we, we got Bloodthirster for Zed. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, Bloodthirster on Zed is really nice. Because Zed already has um, a lot of attack damage because he's ninja. He'll get more attack damage and he'll benefit more from the bonus percent attack damage from the ninja bonus. Uh, because we put the BF sword on him. And since he's going to be dealing like 1k crits that aren't able to be avoided, he's going to be life stealing like a monster. So, let's see. I mean, we're getting so many Dravens, but like. We're assassins, so we don't really use them. Hmm. What do we sell? We already have tier 2 Evelyn. Let's just sell that one. Okay. Okay, that was the person I was slightly worried about, just because the Fame Dancer Draven is kind of spooky, but... Yeah, I just... It doesn't... Like, I'm just so strong right now, there's no way we can lose. But, we still will talk about the, um... What we can do just to, like, guarantee that we are positioned absolutely perfectly. So a Phantom Mancer or Lulu on the left side. Uh, let's do this. Just because it, it didn't make a difference on that um, Phantom Mancer or Draven anyways. So we might as well position for maybe the Lulu. This guy's in second place too. He's like the second strongest. So we'll position to try to get our Zed on him. And honestly, if Kassadin burns our mana on Zed, that's actually a good thing. Because Zed, you don't really want to use his... Like, he doesn't want to use his ability. Like, you just want, you just want him to auto-attack. Because his ability actually is worse. It has such a long animation. And it deals very little damage. Especially with how I have him set up. Where I'm giving him attack damage and attack speed. I just want auto-attacks. I don't want spell cast. So, let's re-roll a little bit. Let's see what we can get. It's here to Rek'Sai. Like oh, Cho'Gas. Hmm. We can take out the Cassadin. So Cassadin's putting Cho'Gas. I like Cho'Gas better. Fine. So we have another Brawler, so Chugath automatically has the uh, extra HP from Brawlers. Oh my gosh, the 1100 crits from the uh, Zed was pretty nice. Although the Akali beat up my Zed pretty hard. Oh man. We just barely won against him. He had a pretty big win streak. So, what happened there was his Akali one-shot my Zed. Which is bad. What do we grab? Let's grab another spatula. Just to make sure you can get one. And if this game lasts long enough for the dragon, I get a spatula from dragon. Could open up some options for even more uh, units. Okay. So honestly, all of his units are in this corner. So what we're gonna do, instead of um, trying to bring the units away, well, let me sell Swain. Instead of trying to bring his units away, we're just gonna stack our CC. I'm gonna put the Warwick here, so that his Cassadin attacks the Warwick. And we're just gonna leave them in the corner. I think it's gonna be the best option. 
So also protect my Zed from getting one shot by Akali, I think. Because now the Akali is going to be attacking stuff like my Cho'Gath. Which is going to be good. Oh man! We got crushed! Okay. Let's level up. So. We need, we need something to take the aggro away from. Hmm. What can we grab? We are at war. Do not forget it. Let's put Cho'Gath here so that the Akali jumps on him. And then maybe that could help us win. Nice! Our Zed took out his Akali. So that's why, I was, that's why I repositioned my Zed in the middle. Was I, I wanted to make sure that the Zed was trying to get onto his Akali. Which is what was screwing me over every round. So let's see how he repositions his unit. Actually. Also, do we want this Cho'Gath? Or we probably want the Cho'Gath. Although, if we put Swain in, we could buff up our Katarina. Let's grab the pike. Shogath? Oh, yeah. So, with the dragon, you want to spread out your units. So. Usually, you want the. So, you usually want one unit to be right in front of the dragon. That way, the dragon focuses just on that one unit. And we put on Rek'Sai just because he disengages uh, aggro. Uh, with his ultimate. So he can tank, CC, and then... Uh... Oh, nice. We can make someone else an assassin, too. Who we want to make an assassin? Ooh, maybe we can make a Yasuo an assassin. That might be pretty good, actually. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm seeing possibilities now. Alright, screw Swain. Let's put Yasuo. Let's put, um... Let's put Warwick in the corner. Let's put Cho'Gath up here. Cure for fools. All right, I, I'm seeing st I'm seeing a, a play about to occur. So he put his Karthus right up front, and he put his Cassid in on the side. Interesting. So my Zed's over here, just doing work. Not being hit whatsoever. My Cho'Gath just had a multi-man knockout. Not bad. If we get a tier 2. Yeah, so honestly, we can replace one of our assassins now, too. So who's a worthless assassin for us? Probably Evelyn. If we can replace her with another CC. Or maybe a Kale. Not too bad either. Double kill. Triple kill? Okay. Yeah, not bad. So we still maintain six assassin bonus because we do have the Oswa. And now we got tier two kill. Just add it into the mix. And again, his uh, Kali was on... Oh, he swapped sides. I was uh, moving my units. I wasn't paying attention. But honestly, like his Cerulean Soul just got screwed because he switched sides. <laughs> I actually ended up working for me. Feels bad for Tim. Anyways, I hope you guys uh, learned something from me talking about positioning either for the creep rounds or the PvP rounds, how to position uh, as assassins, how to position against assassins, uh, etc., etc. And um, thank you guys for watching the video. If you like this kind of content, make sure you leave a like. If you want to watch more videos um, like this, make sure you subscribe. I'll make sure I'll keep up the TFT content for you guys. Um, Thank you all and have a wonderful day.